Hi there guys, I'm Chris Bowden. And I'm Paul Kidwell. Today we're talking about fulgurites. Now, this isn't an original idea to us. We actually saw somebody else do this on the internet. One of our members saw it and sent in a video and said, this is awesome, you guys should try doing this. And what they did is they took a couple electrodes and a pole transformer and a flower pot with some sand in it and they made fulgurites. Now what a fulgurite is, is when lightning strikes the ground, it will sometimes, frequently, fuse the sand into glass because it superheats the mm -hmm. sand and you get these really pretty tubes of glass that are all fractals. Fractals. There's your word of the day. So, what we're going to do is recreate what this other guy did, his experiment, on a terrifyingly larger scale. Instead of using one, give or take probably 10 to 30 kVA pig, we're using a pair of 100 kVA pigs wired in series. Um, our pigs are high voltage, they're 15 kilovolts each, which is a little bit higher than most. And because I think his was like 8,200 volts. From the look of the insulator, it's looked to be about yeah. an 8,000. Yeah, it looks like our Porsche pig. Mm -hmm. um, so we're doing this at four times the voltage and, <laughs> and gobs of power, and we want to see what happens. Now, this is really cool because I want to see if between the two specific electrodes, we get a fractal type pattern. Okay. That's, that's my experiment. I want to see if we can get the fractal type pattern. I want to see if we can do it long enough where they become stable. When he did it, he made popcorn mm -hmm. because fulgurites are really delicate. I want to see if we can do it long enough, hard enough, raw, where we can have... I want, I want a fulgurite that I can put on a shelf. Okay. That's my goal. I want a fulgurite on a shelf. Okay. Okay. If I, get, if I achieve that, that's my win for the day. All right. So what are your thoughts? Well, Like one, on this whole process. The ones I saw he made were like that long. Yeah. Like little things. He they made were, a lot of little popcorn pieces. Too. Yes. So, and he was running it for a while. So I don't know. It's like as one forms, it's going to drive all the moisture off from that. So then but you're going to But it doesn't need others. the moisture. Once you, have oh, you ever it, played with glass in high voltage? Oh, yeah. Once you get it incandescent hot, once it's glowing, it's conductive. Okay. So the water, I, I don't even know. We might be able to do this dry. Well, sand's wet to start with. Because you so. only got one type of sand. It still bothers me. They, had, they sold two types of sand. He bought one because he's mean to me. He denies me sand. All right. So you want to go to high voltage? Play Let's go to high voltage. All right, guys. So here we are in the high voltage lab. We've got our pot. We've yep. got our one color of sand. We've got an explosion proof camera in the super safe housing. Yeah. And I have safety glasses for science. Good to hear. There you go. So what we've got is a pair of 100 kVA pole mount transformers yes. that we've wired in series. They're properly phased. Yes. And on each side, we have the output wire hooked to a copper electrode, which is totally not just a piece of three quarter inch pipe. No. And we put all. these in here. So yes. we, filled it with, we filled this with sand. We stab these in. We turn on the power. We make fulgurites. That's right. That, it's that easy. It's that easy. OK. Let's do this then. Do you have your Gerber artifact, sir? I had my Gerber artifact. I have my Gerber artifact. There you go. Here, Paul. Yes. I'll teach you how to do this. It's old school feed mill knowledge. Okay. Yeah. You start here, stab. Yeah. Go up. Then okay. grab here, stab, go out. Okay. All right. So you get a. You just cut that right off like that. Much better than the diagonal corner. Yeah. Don't don't that. do that. Just done. All right. Usually you can do it in two, but you got to pull it a little tight. I didn't do that. Pull it up. There you go. Okay. You're never going to make it through the war. No, the, I caught the end, the oh, okay. unsharp go, go portion ahead. of go the blade. And then put it over your shoulder and then pour it. The sand is very, very wet. Yes, it is. Okay, I'm just going to tear the whole top wide open. <laughs> Because this does not pour like nice clean beach sand. This is I this is wet, wet sand. You sure we're gonna need four of those in there? Yeah. You sure we're gonna need four of those in there? How about you drop a, drop a second one in there and we How see? How about what we happens. put the electrodes in first and then pour the rest in? So we get sand all over the things. I'm trying to keep it tidy. I did the math. All right. You did the math, huh? I did the math. Your math says you need four I, in this pot. 
Well, it said half cubic. Dump the second one in there. It said half cubic foot of sand, okay. and I calculated the pot, and I thought we had about. Help me get that over the electric. Go ahead. There you go. Dump it right in there. Whole thing. Yeah. Hey, you say we can fit two more bags in there. Well, apparently Because you not. did the math. I thought I did the math. It's pi r square h for a cylinder. Hold on, we got a little more. Yeah. This, uh, this is why you're not the treasurer for the geek group. Hey, I can hold eight dimensional arrays in my head and have done so. Yeah, but you can't multiply. I cannot do simple math. Can thing. I help you? Yeah, I'm trying to get the stuff off so your hand. It's off. At this point, I want you to know that I am just playing in the sand. You're playing in the sand. Playing in the sand for science. Now, do we need to do anything special? Because I've got like, it's like we're I this, could, no, this I is could get research. the vibrating tamper and stuff. This is research. OK. You're so supposed to have, kick in with what We have no idea means. what the hell we're doing. We have no clue. Basically, okay. that's, here we go. All right, we have, we have a, a pot with wet sand. Now, the question is. Do we dial down the current over there a little I bit? Crank it up. <laughs> I think the higher the current we have, the more it's going to fuse. All right. I'm just concerned about like, well, what can we draw without popping breakers? Do we have the climb pond amp meter? Not handy. I haven't seen it in a long time. Okay. Well, then let's just do it. And see what happens. Yeah. Okay. See now you got all these wires in my way. It's not safe. OSHA would not approve. All right. Let's it's fire it up and see what happens. Are you kidding? Okay, bring it up, Paul. Very act coming up. Here we go. All right, Paul. Yeah. I've noticed the arcs out here are very high current arcs. Yes. I wanted to show people just how much this can arc just from this. So I got a trusty hot stick. These are really high current arcs because this would be part of the tank circuit. So I'm going to reach in there and grab one of these like that. Get a good grip on it. That's beautiful, Paul. By the way, that arc is not connecting with the other electrode. That's connecting with the sand. That means I can draw it out over the sand. Like to point out that we have enough energy here to blast electricity through a terracotta flower pot.
Turn it off. All right, so what we've done is we've basically arced the living hell out of this sand. I wouldn't, I would, man, there's got to be needles in there, little tiny stuff. We've got to figure out a way to vacuum this out or something. But we've got a tray to put all the fulgurites in. We are going to, we're going to play a little bit more. And then we're going to let this cool off overnight. Tomorrow morning, we'll come back and we'll clean this all out. We'll vacuum it all out really, really gently. We'll lay out all the fulgurites on a tray, and you'll be able to see the fulgurites that we've made with our experimental setup here. But so far, I'd have to say this is pretty successful. I mean, there's, there's a lot. Ooh, there's a good one. Yeah. A special, right in here and right in here, you're going to find the best. Okay. At least from this last go-round here. And I really, I like, okay, this is what I think. I think putting both in and letting it cook is the wrong way to do it. I think it's better to have one stationary electrode and then one that you can move around and pick different paths. The water's boiling yeah. out of the sand. Oh, well, that pipe was cherry hot. That is so cool. I, I think it's better to have one that you can control it and move around and do stuff. I think you don't need the giant volume of sand. I you think, need a shallow pan. I, I think a shallow like a tube. I think it'd be a really good way to do this if you had uh, a tube, a non-conductive tube of sand, mm -hmm. and you had an electrode in each end, and let it work its way across. And as a follow-up video to this, I want to... You ever built a Jacob's Ladder on a 2 by 4 You yeah. ever done that? Mm -hmm. All right, so you know about the carbon tracking that you get through the wood? Yeah. I think this is doing the exact same thing. That's exactly what it is. And it's yeah. fusing as it goes. Mm -hmm. And when the fan, when the sand gets hot enough, it, it melts and goes incandescent, and at which point it conducts, so it just keeps getting easier and easier. It connects eventually. The current carrying capacity goes through the roof, and it's like, the, it's like with Tesla coils, making the arcs, f making the jump from streamers to arcs. Right. In a Tesla coil, when you have, like if this is your top load, and you have electri an, an electrical path coming off, an ion trail, that's a streamer, okay? When it connect, and those are usually thin, crackly purple. When it touches something and you, you get the bridge, then it becomes an arc. It gets and much brighter. It gets much thicker because the, it, it now has a current path. Instead of just going out to air, it's got a current path. And since it can transmit current, since it, since it has a current, because the ion trail itself is a current carrying conductor, it gets a lot thicker, it gets a lot hotter, and that's when they turn white. We're doing the same thing here with sand, and it's really, I'm glad we did this, because I saw the other guy's video, and that was cool, and what he did was awesome, but I don't think he really understood all of the science behind it, and mm -hmm. he really appreciated everything he was doing, and it's neat that we can do this with much higher powers, and, and we have, mm -hmm. you know, things like hot sticks, and, and a man on the button, and yeah, and we can do this safely. Do not even think about trying this at home. I don't think don't. a lot of people have if you have a 200 kVA pole pig power supply in your garage and you have a trusted buddy that you've been working with for 20 years, okay. But you need to trust him with your life and you yourself need to be pretty crazy. But you get to, you get to do this and you make art. All right. You so that's sure. the video for now. We will be back tomorrow morning to follow up on this, but we have to, we're going to play some more with some arcs and sparks, and we need to let the camera crew go home because they're dying. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I'm, I'm not done yet. All right, guys, we're back. It is now Sunday afternoon because we don't do anything in the morning. And this has had all night to cool off. Yes, it is. And all it right. is not boiling water off the bottom. And that, yeah, it's, it, it is in it fact is cool. cold, which is nice. And there's like there are little bits of glass all well, over the outside. So yeah, be careful. This stuff's got to be like needle sharp. There's a... Wow. Dirty, ugly glass. Okay, now what yeah, and I'm going to do... I mean, do, there's like serious all right, cracks. Be, before we get into that, I don't want to just dive in. I want to use the shot vac to lightly well, there's dust a bunch off the top. Yeah, we're going we're gonna to pull the stuff off the top. We'll set these aside. Glad that fell off now and not yesterday. All right, now let's just grab the easy ones. Oh, look at that one. Oh. These are really neat, man. They're way bigger than I thought they'd be. Some places the sand is actually discolored. Oh, there's a good one. 
What you got? It's like you, you see one little tiny end. Ooh, wow, that was a real good one. One little end That's sticking beautiful. out of the top. So we use a vacuum to just pull away very delicately the top layer. A smaller shot back. All right, so after a very tedious experience of, we removed all the sand with the vacuum. vacuum yeah. um, we tried a big shot back. We had to go to a little one to make it work mm -hmm. right. But now you can see this is all the fulgurites we were able to salvage. There were thousands of smaller than these that just went up the vacuum. We it tried putting a screen on it, and it, mm -hmm. that was a bad idea. Um, it, they're so delicate, they disintegrate coming out. It's all of this probably started out as maybe four or five really big ones that branched out. And you can see on this, this is a beautiful example, all the little branches that come out and they just break off. Well, this where it broke off was probably, you know, one of these little itty bitty ones here and it goes out and out and out because it's, it's fractal. But without the sand to support it and they don't have enough inherent strength to really fuse together, they just break apart. Mm -hmm. The ones that are the strongest are the ugliest ones because they get really thick and it just turns into a blob of molten glass so you just get a blob. But this washed off could look really incredible and we're going to try taking the bigger ones like that and just washing all the loose sand off and seeing what we can get. Right now they're all covered in a light coating of loose sand but that'll come away as, as they dry out and they get cleaner. There's one giant one down in here that we can't take out without destroying it but I wanted to show it to you guys. This is where in the video you saw the big S curve on the side of the glass or on the, the side of the terracotta and that's because this piece of glass fused to the terracotta and you can see it started right here and this went all the way down to the bottom and spread out and it's beautiful and there's a bunch of smaller ones around the inside of the pots but all in all I'd have to say this was wildly successful mm -hmm. and it's something that I want to do a lot more experimentation with. I think we can do this better. Okay. And I think we learned a lot of fundamental knowledge in doing this that will allow us to make better fulgurites. So look for a future fulgurite video where we refine this process a lot more. But the first thing we have to do is build a much, much more robust power supply because ours is not happy. No, it so didn't, we it didn't do, like us. We got to do some that. repair work on that so we can make sure Gemini works right. Mm -hmm. So I want to thank you guys for hanging out and watching and exploring some really cool experimental science with Paul and I here at The Geek Group. Learn more about us at thegeekgroup.org. And by all means, please share this video with everybody you like. Until next time, I'm Chris Bowden. And I'm Paul Kidwell. We'll see you next time. This video was made possible by a grant from the Future Girl Foundation. This video was made possible by thousands of private donations from members and viewers like you. Please visit thegeekgroup.org for more information on how you can donate and become a part of our dreams of Avalon.